Greetings, people of the internet. This is Scott with CircWorks Art Labs, and this is the underground laboratory where I create robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. And today, we're gonna do something a little different. A lot of times, I'll do a sketch or something like that, but this time, I'm gonna go deep. I'm gonna show you my entire process from sketch all the way to the finished product of how I create one of my art prints, particularly this one, this exclusive print that I did for Phoenix Comic Con. I really dig this one. I had a lot of fun with it. I want to show you how it all came together. So let's check it out. All right, so I have been wanting to do a video like this for some time. If you're a longtime uh, follower of my channel, you probably know that I do a lot of sketching, uh, usually pencils, pen and ink, but I haven't really gone into the process of how uh, I take that all the way to a finished product, like like I do for the art prints that that I sell at conventions and in my store and everything. Uh, so this will this you take through that whole process. Now, now again, I always start by sketching, and that's what I'm doing right now. Now, when I approach a piece like this, uh, in the beginning, I'm not really concerned uh, too much with composition. I've sort of an idea in my head what I want this to look like, but nothing ever comes out the way I imagine in my head. So um, sometimes uh, I surprise myself, but most of the time it's like, hmm, yeah, I don't know. But the, no, that looks all right. Uh, but anyway, so I don't really, it doesn't come together. It's not like I have this vision, this vision in my head and everything, all the fits, pieces fit perfectly and it comes out exactly the way I want it. But I do have sort of an idea. And one of the ideas that I had was, I, I want this to be sort of an homage to sort of uh, the giant like super robot genres of like uh, you know in like old-school anime or even live-action uh, stuff like Voltron or Battle of Planets before that or even like Power Rangers um, and all those Though all those shows kind of have a certain they usually have like five pilots and they each have a particular archetype Sometimes they'll vary a little bit for the most part. They're kind of the same So I wanted to create my own version of that So that's what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm just creating these little headshots of the pilot and as you can see I'm just there's as far as placement I'm not worried about that because I'm gonna bring all this stuff into the computer and then I, uh, once I start doing the line work in, in Adobe Illustrator then I'm gonna start rearranging things and moving things around and creating the composition so there's that and then I'm also going to illustrate like a giant robot that I kind of want like you're looking up at this massive robot um, so that's how I start off and right now what I'm doing I'm just using you know you can use whatever you want to sketch uh, I'm using a lead holder with a non photo repo blue uh, pencil lead um, and the good thing about this is you can see right now when you see when I start doing my lines over that, it's easy to see the difference. Now, if I was just doing a regular graphite pencil where it was gray, or if you're really heavy handed, more black, then the black's gonna be hard to see. So I kinda like using like a blue or even a red, something different than that black. So anyway, what I'm doing now is I've scanned this in into the computer. Now, you can also work totally digital. You can do all your sketching digital. Um, and I'll probably start doing more of that now that I have a Cintiq, but um, this was an older drawing. I'm still, I'm still trying to transition because I still like that feel of paper. But anyway, so I'll scan in my paper, and what I'll do in, in Adobe Illustrator, that's the first program I use, and later we'll go into Photoshop, and I do that mostly for coloring. But for the line work that you're seeing now, I do that all in Adobe Illustrator because it gives a really crisp line, and I like that. Um, I also like loose stuff like you see in my sketches, but for this finish, for finished stuff, I like the really crisp look to it. So I use Adobe Illustrator for that. I will create a layer uh, that's just a, a sketch layer and I'll p paste my sketch in the sketch layer that'll be the bottom layer and then I'll lock that layer so that I'm not writing to it or moving the sketches around and then I'll create some more layers and the, now the, these two layers and this is just my process again different people do different things but um, I create a layer called open and a layer called close and now what the close layer is, it's, the, it's going to be the outline. Now if you look at this, you can see the outline around the character, except for the visor, which I kind of want to be a little transparent and a little thinner. But it's all pretty much that, it's a thicker. It's, the outline is thicker and the inner lines are thinner. Um, now, you can see what I'm doing right now in these inner lines. We're going to get to this later when we start illustrating the robot. But now I'm kind of varying the line weight of the inner lines. So. But I don't want I don't want the outer line to change. I want that to be one solid thickness, which it, which in this uh, version or this drawing that I'm doing, that outer stroke weight is uh, four points. 
Um, so, but the inner the inner one's going to change a little bit. But I don't want to accidentally select that outer line and ac accidentally adjust the width of that line because I want that to be the same thickness. Uh, so that's why I have the two different layers. So once I draw the outline of my shape, then I will lock that layer and then I'll open the other layer, the open layer. And that just and the reason why I call them open and close again, this is just my thing. But these lines are open. They're not all the the closed layer is usually the outline, which is all it goes all the way around and it's usually connected. All right, as you can kind of see right here, you can see. And now I'm starting to go in now that we're illustrating the robot. Um, but anyway, so. Like I said before, uh, the outer line is going to be a, stro is a line width of 0.4, um, or I'm sorry, four points. And the inner line, that can vary because it's, because again, we're going to change the thickness of that. But I can usually, I usually like go about half that, so maybe like a two. Um, and then we can, we can kind of change that as we go. We can, uh, we'll adjust that and I'll show you how to do that. But the first thing I do is I, I create sort of like a palette. Um, and basically this is just a line, a single line, or you can do a closed shape, or even you can use your circle tool or your square tool. And what you want to do is you make sure that that, say if you're using a circle, uh, make sure that that's the, if you're doing the outline, make sure that that's four points. And make sure there's no fill, that it's just the line weight. And then you also want to, you also want to, and what basically what we're doing now is we're just creating a little swatch that we can use our uh, eyedropper tool, tool to select so that we always pick up exactly that information. Um, and one of the important things is in your stroke palette, uh, under where it says the width, and again for the outline, the width is going to be four points, but under that you're going to see cap and corner. And to the left hand side, usually what I use, and it depends what I'm doing, and I'll explain the difference, but for the cap and corner, um, what I do is I select the leftmost side, and that's a butt cap, and on the corner, the leftmost uh, option is a miter join. And you don't really have to worry about these terms or anything, but that's going to give you some sharp, like if you look at the top of the wings where it comes to a sharp point, um, that's going to make sure everything's sharp. Now, a lot of times um, I will also use the middle options, the rounded cap and the rounded corner, um, because sometimes when you're dealing with sharp things, the way Illustrator, especially when you're applying like an outline or uh, like a thicker stroke, um, it just does some really crazy things. So I just want you, because it took me a while to figure out how to do this, um, but because we are going to start. Some of these lines we want to taper off, almost like when you're when you're like when you're doing when you're inking traditionally, and you've got you start you start with a thick line and then it kind of tapers off. Um, but we don't want to taper it off into a, we want it to taper off sharp. So we're going to use those left hand uh, options for the cap and corner. Now when we do the when we're going to do an outline around the the edge, sometimes. Uh, we want to use rounded, so I just want you want you to be aware of those options because it took me a while to figure that out. Um, but once I did, it kind of it, it opened a whole new world, and I I learned how I can kind of get that that look of uh, sort of the look I'm looking at is sort of uh, what you see in some coloring books where you've got a thick outline and then inside you've got that thinner line, and that's kind of the look I like. So um, that's the reason why I do that. So we're gonna create. Uh, two swatches, one for their inside lines and one for the outside. So the inside again is going to be like a two point with your your corner caps and corner uh, corner corners. I guess <laughs> just the, the left hand again the left leftmost option for those. So you set all that information, then you can just take your eyedropper and select that and go ahead and and you know draw your shapes and everything. Um, so to to do this illustration, what I'm using is I use the pen tool. Now, if you if you've never used Illustrator or a similar uh, vector type program, I know there's like Inkscape and things. I'm not really familiar with that one, but the pen tool is is isn't really that intuitive, or it's that it's very different from your traditional drawing. So it takes a lot of getting used to. Uh, but the key thing that you want to do, and, and to get your pen tool, you can just click the P on your keyboard, that'll select it, or off on your toolbox, it looks like a little, like an old inkwell pen. Um, and it, 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 you, it's not like you're drawing like a, you know, like a pencil or like a brush or anything. What you're doing is actually you're going to start 
you're gonna find your first shape, you're gonna click down on it, and then you're gonna find kind of the next, the, where you're trying to go to, and you're gonna click down on that, and then you kind of, you're playing, you're, you can kind of pull that and create your curves and things like that. It's, it's kind of difficult to explain if you've never done it. What I would suggest if you've never done, if you've never uh, illustrated with the pen tool, is to go look for some uh, tutorials online, there's a bunch of them, and kind of play around with it because that's just too in depth for me to, to talk about here. But the key thing you want to remember when you're using the pen tool is once you've clicked your starting point and your end point, and you, then you're going to drag, you're going to hold down, and you're going to, whether if it's the mouse, you want to you click and drag down your mouse if you want that curve to go up. Now, if you want that curve to go down, you're going to drag up. So it's the opposite. That's the main thing you have to, you kind of have to remember because it's very, it, it doesn't, if you, because otherwise you'll be trying to, it's just not working. Um, it's you know it, it, you're you're pulling up to go down and you're pulling down to go up. That's that's the core of of working with the pen tool. But there's a little more to it and a lot of practice and thing. Um, but again, I can't really go into all that right now. Um, but anyway, so what I've done is I've drawn the outline on one layer. I've drawn all the interior things on another layer. Now what I'm doing is I'm going in and I'm taking those inner lines and I'm varying the line weights of them as you can see. Some of them are kind of tapering off and that just it, it just gives it a better look. It looks it still looks clean and everything but it's it's got some some variation in that line weight and that's the style that I'm kind of going for. Now when I'm working with a Mac like this a lot of that you don't see as much. If I'm working with more, sort of a more organic shape, you'll see that a lot more when I'm doing you're doing more kind of cartoony stuff. Now this is all very structured because it's all angles and things like that and curves and so there's not as much of varying uh, widths inside here. Some of them, you know, some of them might can kind of keep the same or whatever, uh, but I does add kind of a really cool feel to it. So uh, the way you want to do that is by selecting your width tool. Now the width tool is you can you can hit Shift W and that will bring up your width tool, or it, it, the the actual icon. It's it's kind of hard to explain. It looks like almost like a little upside down mustache with sort of a, a line cross between it and at the end of those lines are little circles and what those are, those are like just indicating the bezier point curves that you pull on and those are, that's just what you use when you're drawing in the pen tool and you do these curves, they're called bezier curves, you don't really need to know that. But anyway, the, I guess the simplest way to do it is just select, uh, hit your shift and your W and that'll bring up the width tool and that's going to allow you to change the width of your line. So once you have that width tool selected, just click anywhere on your line that you want to adjust. So if you click, if you click on the middle and then if you pull up, now this is again, this, this is going to be the kind of the opposite I was telling you about the curves. This, this you're just gonna pull in the direction you want. So if you pull up, it's gonna make it grow. If you pull down, it's, gonna, it's going to um, reduce the size. So, and I don't wanna, I, I, don't, I never wanna go larger than that four point outline. So I wanna, I personally keep it under that. But, so I will select like the inside, maybe in the middle, I'll pull it out just a tad, just to thicken that up. Or like when I get towards the end of a line, I'll put, I'll, I'll pinch it. So you're kind of grabbing the end point of that line, and you're, you're kind of pulling down, and you're pinching it, and that'll, that'll give you a nice, sharp angle, almost like it's, like again, like it's tapering off. Now, if you have a, say, if you have a straight line, and you want it to taper on both ends, if you just went to one end and tapered it there, and you went to the other end and tapered it there, the whole line will just disappear because you've tapered, you've basically brought the width of both sides all the way together so it's so it's just the line is gone now because you can't see it because you pinch both ends so if you're gonna if you have a shape like that what you want to do is you want to click somewhere in the middle of the shape and that'll give you an extra little point so that will stay stationary and you can you can kind of bring those edges in and that took me I remember when I was first learning how to do it it took me a little while to figure that out like, how do I, I want these both to taper, but they're not working. So, so you kind of have to have that middle, middle point somewhere in your, your line work. 
but once you you know one kind of once you get the hang of this I mean you can get some really you know sharp sharp lines and it's really crisp and it, it it looks a little less, even though we're, again, this is sort of a robot and he's, he's very structured looking. It, it looks a little less like it's done in the computer. It looks sharp, but but you've sort of got some free form in there because of the, the varying line weights and everything. And that's that's how I you know want my drawings to look. And again, you can you can do your own thing. You can play around with some of these techniques and maybe come up with your own style. But this is something that I've used, and I try to do it with most of my finished illustrations because it gives it gives a style to something. So when somebody looks at it, they if they look at all my drawings, they can see I'm using these same techniques. So what I just did there. Now what you see that little orange thing. Um, another reason for having those separate layers is now you want to go and you want to what I did was I went and unlocked uh, the close layer and I just duplicated that shape that whole outline shape and I brought that off to the side and then I switched it from a stroke to a fill and then what I can do is I can create a separate layer called called fill and put that under the close layer right below that and then I can bring that behind it and then basically I've got the shape of my character all filled in. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to do that same process one more time but create another layer called uh, I think I call it outline and I'll probably do like a like a 12 point fairly thick um, and that's going to be that's going to be the and this is just this is totally a style choice I'm a big fan of like, for some reason I like all those old stickers from the 80s where you had kind of the image and around that image where the die was, you kind of had like a white outline. I like that. So that's not for everyone, but that's part of my style. So I make a little outline and now I'm going to put that behind it and that'll kind of help it pop out from the background. Now you can see right now it's kind of, I've got to send that to the back. So that's on a separate layer. So now I'm going to outline. Usually, usually it's pretty white. It's, this is a little going to be a little bit of off-white. Now you can see what I'm doing. Um, because those, those shapes didn't, sometimes those points don't go the way you want. So I have to go in and kind of fix those a little bit. And that's sometimes what I was saying as far as those caps and corners. They can get really unpredictable when you come to some lines. They'll just sh like shoot off and they just don't look right. So sometimes you kind of have to play around a little, either, either like get rid of those points and go back and sort of redraw them. Or um, an easy way to do it, it doesn't quite have that sharp look, but if you go with those, those circular or the, the rounded caps and corners, it won't, sh those lines won't go crazy because it'll just round them all off and everything. So that's an option too. Um, so anyway, so now I've got my, my drawing. I've got, uh, basically we're getting close to everything that I do in Illustrator. I'm just kind of fixing a few things right now, going in and fixing some of those weird lines that kind of went astray and trying to make sure they all uh, look the way I want them to do. Um, anyway, so, uh, Getting close to the end of this, now the next step is going to be bringing this into Photoshop. And that's where I do a lot of my drawings. Now, um, usually sometimes I'll bring different elements in. So at this point, since we, since those two layers, the outline layer, or not the outline, I'm sorry, the closed and open layers, since I've already done all the work in those, I can probably merge those into one layer. Um, and then I'm going to just, so I can select both of those, I can bring those into Illustrator. I'm sorry, into Photoshop, and then I'm going to start building my uh, layers in Photoshop. Um, but you can see these are all the different elements that are going to make up this illustration. Now I'm going in, I'm doing the same thing I did with the outline of the, of the mech, and I'm doing it for the pilots. So I'm creating, I'm taking that out, outer outline, making a copy of it, and then I'm going to go ahead and, and convert that to a fill. Then I've sort of got the basis of the inside color that, I'm, that I can select and then I can go in and Photoshop and I can kind of use that almost sort of as a mask. I don't use actual masks a lot, um, but that'll be the basis of that. Um, so anyway, now I'm just kind of going in and doing all that. So I'll have all these different elements, then I'll start building into Photoshop and then then I'm going to start moving things around and, and all that. Um, so, you know, that's when the illustrate, my illustration starts to sort of 
take shape because before like I said I, I have a sort of a basic idea but it doesn't, doesn't always look in my head the way I want it to now once I have all these individual elements um, now I'm going to start playing around with some type um, because one thing you'll find in all of my illustration I'm, I'm I consider myself just as much of a graphic designer as I do an illustrator um, so I like to play around with graphics. Most of my prints have type integrated in them. So what I do when I'm, if I'm making a logo or if I'm just doing type like this, I will just copy a word like this. I'll make a bunch of copies. Then I'll go select a bunch of different fonts or typefaces. And uh, then I'll start seeing kind of what I like. I'll convert some of those to uh, um, artwork. And basically what that is is you can only do so much with type if you want to kind of change the font if you want to uh, manipulate it and things sometimes you have to convert that to artwork and then you can start uh, doing whatever you want like a regular piece of artwork so I'm right now I'm just kind of playing around with some lines and building a logo and I'm gonna call this one Mega Force 5 um, or Phoenix Force 5 because this is gonna be or this was an exclusive print for Phoenix Comic Con and I'm gonna make some of the I'm gonna make these available on my web store you won't find it at any any other conventions because exclusive to Phoenix Comic Con but I can sell them at my store and I've got a few left um, so this will be available um, but anyway so now I'm just playing around again I'm manipulating the X kind of I, I wasn't really happy with that so I decided to leave it the way it was um, but but that's kind of what I do I play around with the type um, I kind of you know, put it as an angle of course this bar over it, I'm gonna lose a lot of that illustration but the cool thing about Illustrator is if I want to do something else with that that robot this mech I could take that piece and and put it on something else or repurpose it or whatever because um, it's all done in layers so that's why I did want to finish the entire robot off instead of just if I knew oh, I'm gonna put this bar of type over it why bother with all the details in there but you never know what you're gonna do with it plus I didn't really exactly know where I was going to put the type and everything. Again, I had an idea, but I'm playing around. Um, I also like to brand all my posters that I do. So I have my little cert, I'll throw her in right now. That's my little CircWorks icon. And I'm also creating, I'm also using the Phoenix Comic Con logo in there because this is an exclusive print. So I wanted both those logos to kind of be represented. And again, that's just a design choice. Now, some people might look at my prints and say, oh, I like the print, but uh, uh, why does it say CircWorks on it? Um, but I want to brand everything. I, I want everything to. I, I want this to be something uh, that eventually people will want it to say Cirqueworks. You know, like uh, say if you're like Johnny Cupcakes. I mean, they buy that because it's Johnny Cupcakes. They don't. You know, so that's kind of the thing. Now here I'm playing with the big five. Uh, I think I'm gonna X X that because it just you can't really tell what you know. You can't see the five. There's just so much stuff going on. So. So again, a lot of this is just playing around with ideas and that's just part of my creative process. I've got some sort of rays. I'll probably keep those in there. They'll be a little more subtle. And once I bring it into Photoshop, which I just did, <laughs> then I, I, I went, now I've done all, I'm doing my flatting here. So I've got all, I flat colored all the different colors. And again, I play around with different color schemes. Um, I like a little more, I don't want to, this isn't monochromatic because there's at least, you know, three or four major colors in here, but I don't like to get crazy with the colors. I like to keep it to a, you know, around five colors more or less. Um, to me, that's just a designy choice. So after I flatted everything, then I'm going to use my lasso tool or my polygon lasso tool and I am going to create, uh, I'm going to start adding highlights and shadows so that's kind of what I do now depending on what I'm doing like for the sword I'm using the polygon because what you can do is you can click one point click another point and kind of get straight lines um, with some of the other things I'll just kind of do sort of freehand and it's definitely a lot easier to do that now that I've got the Cintiq um, before I could still do it you know I could still do it with the with the Intuos tablet but the Cintiq makes it a little easier because it's more like you're actually drawing on the surface so that's cool. Um, yeah, I just I really do want to delve more into using the Cintiq, especially for painting, which I haven't. I've only had it. I've had it for what maybe a couple months, but I haven't really used it other than just to do normal everyday things. Not really any drawing or painting on it. So, um, but what I'll do as far as uh, my shading and my highlights is 
I'll just use my eyedropper tool to select whatever color I'm going to add a highlighter or a, um, or a shadow to. And then I will make, I'll take that, like the go into the color picker and kind of make it a little lighter for a highlight or a little darker of that same color. I am not a fan of using straight whites for highlights and, or definitely not blacks because it just, it looks really muddy. So I never, I usually never use like a black unless I'm, unless I'm using like a gray, you know. But even then some of my grays, if you look at this gray, it's got a little like the grays that you see inside, um, you know, some of the undercarriage, some of these little gears and things and in the fingers and things like that. Um, it's got a, it's kind of got a little bit of a blue to it. So nothing, I, I don't really like, you know, I, I like to either have like, the gray to be a little more warm or a little cooler, but I don't like, I just don't, don't like the look of, um, of using blacks. Because a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll, they'll just throw a black, you know, and then they'll adjust the opacity and for their shadows. Um, might be quicker that way because you don't have to keep switching from colors and things. I just don't, I, I, to me, it just doesn't look good. So I always, I always just use a little darker color of the actual color that I'm going over when I'm doing all my highlights and things like that. Now, this, again, this is my personal preference, the way I do it. You could also, this is very, this would also be fairly simple to do. Not, I don't want to say simple because obviously it's, it's not that simple because the reason why I'm doing this part in Photoshop is because it's, it's quicker for me. Um, but this is all very, it's, it's not, I don't do, in my prints, I don't do a lot of airbrushing and things like that. Although I do like that look, but for my stuff, I kind of keep it just the highlights, just the middle grounds and just the shadows. Um, that's in my personal preference. If, if you're more into like airbrush, an airbrush look, that's cool. And that look looks great. Um, but you can do all that. You can do all this in Illustrator. Um, I just find I can kind of go a little quicker in Photoshop and there's, uh, eventually there's some other techniques and things like if you look if you if you look again and you can see and now the white remember the outline before how it was sort of a cream color well what I did was I changed that back to white because I, I wanted that to pop um, but if you look behind that you'll see a shadow um, now this shadow was a little tricky to do because again the default shadow, if you go to, I think it's, uh, what is it, layer, layer styles, and then drop shadow, it'll just create a black drop shadow. And it doesn't always look that great, because if you look right here under the wing there, you can kind of see the shadow is orange. Um, so, but the problem when you're doing that is not every, not not all the background is that darker orange. Once we get back into there's some blues and things like that, um, then I kind of have to change the color. So sometimes what I'll have to do is a lot, if I'm doing something like that, I can't really use the, um, I can't really use the drop shadow tool. What I'll actually have to do is do it the old fashioned way before they introduce that, that quick drop shadow. Um, and I'll have to like take that outline, create a separate layer, um, select that layer, and then do like a, a what do you call it? Like, um, I, the terminology is escaping me right now, but it's sort of like a, a fade or a, 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 what is the term for that? Now I got <laughs> feather. Yes, I knew it started with an F. So anyway, so I'll have to kind of create my own drop shadow and then I can kind of change part of it blue, part of it orange, whatever I want. But you can see how it pops out. It makes that it makes that white line pop out when you get that shadow beneath it. Um, so again, that you'll find that in each one of my illustrations. The other thing you're gonna find is what I'm doing now is where I color in all the, I use color holds to color in all these things because I don't like that stark black outline. I want to pick a darker color than the darkest, than that middle ground and darker than the shadow. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna color all those, all the lines in. And how you do that is fairly simple. So in Photoshop, in your layers uh, window, uh, right, right under where you've got your little filters, where you've got the normal and the multiplier drop down list, underneath that, to the left, there's gonna be a little thing that says lock and there's gonna be a little, like a selection tool. Just click on that, it'll put a little X in it. And that means that layer's locked. So what that does, it means anything you draw on that layer, it won't touch anything except your line, 
your, your lines, whatever is on that layer. So if everything else is transparent, it's not going to affect that. So then you can go and you can select like a brush tool. And usually I don't want any kind of, uh, I want it to be a nice crisp brush or sometimes even use the pencil tool because that's always going to be crisp and then just go in and you just select your color and just draw over it and then keep repeating that. And that way it kind of gives, um, and I kind of, I don't know where I pick up all these little tricks and things, not tricks, but these little style, you know, things that I do. Uh, but this one I think I, I picked up from, um, the old Disney, uh, I remember the old Disney VHF, H, bleh, VHF covers. Um, what they, VHF? <laughs> VHS, see it's, it's so old I don't even remember what they're called, or DVDs, um, whatever. Uh, but Disney used to kind of have this particular style where they would, they would do sort of airbrush style, like I mentioned, I'm not really doing that. But all the lines would be, would be colored, uh, you know, the outlines would be kind of colored a little darker than whatever that color was inside. And I've always kind of liked that. So, so it's kind of, when I'm coming up with the style, I'm picking little things from all kinds of, of other things that I've seen that really have nothing to do with each other and I'm kind of taking bits and pieces to kind of inform my own style so whether I kind of like that look of the the, um, the the coloring books with that thick outline the stickers that I used to like with the white around them um, and then dropping that shadow to kind of pop that out a little more or just or just doing all these color holds now in comic books um, like you see can you see the flame around there um, so that one's a little different where right now I'm going a little brighter where usually I go darker but that'll kind of pop that up now in comic books when you use color holds um, you don't want to get too crazy with those in that this is an entirely different thing but in comic books usually do it for like again flames or like bla laser blasts and things like that um, things that you kind of want to kind of kind of fade you know, that you don't want to pop, that you don't want to be a stark. But for comics, at least in my opinion, you want the line of work to be kind of black. That's just comic books. This stuff's a little different. So anyway, so I'm starting to kind of wrap this up. I've got most of my, you know, all my lines colored in. I'm starting to bring the graphic elements in, start moving around. I've got my, the each little pilot um, that's, that pilots this mech. Um, and I'm going to start moving these graphics in. I've got the names for each one of them. And again, these are just sort of the different archetypes that you kind of find in like a Voltron or a, um, you know, Power Rangers or whatever, or uh, Battle of the Planets. You've got the leader, you've got the hotshot guy, you've got the princess, you've got the kid genius and the, the strong guy. So, um, or the heavy guy, he's <laughs> kind of the heavy guy. Um, so, uh, so I'm kind of playing around with those, creating my own version, uh, and again tying it into Phoenix Comic Con because I've seen people do they'll do an exclusive print for a comic convention, but it really a lot of times it doesn't have anything to do with that convention. Now we're talking Phoenix, so I wanted a, sort of a Firebird, like a I, I've got if you look at the chest plate, you'll have you'll see the it's the Phoenix Comic Con logo, you know, integrated in there. Um, I've got the fire, the wings, you know, and the the head shape. I've kind of got that kind of a beak head shape. All the, you know, the the pilots, their their helmets are kind of bird shaped, birds of prey shaped. And again, I borrowed that from a, a lot of that from Battle of the Planets, where they they were all kind of bird themed. But this is more of a you know bird of prey type thing. And I think the ship in Battle of the Planets is called the Phoenix. But so I just wanted to kind of take some of that and use that and. Phoenix is such a cool idea to use, especially for <laughs> Phoenix Comic Con. Um, and I, the same thing with the color scheme and all that. So right now what I'm doing is, you, you could saw earlier, I picked, I'm taking, um, taking this, just it's just a, like a photograph, like a stock photo of a texture. Um, dropping that in the background, I'm gonna add a filter to it. Now, um, I don't put this over the whole illustration. Sometimes people will put it over the whole illustration to kind of give the whole thing sort of that um, kind of worn feel. But I like the way I like the way I like to put in the background. That way, the the foreground elements, the pilot and the graphic design, um, they're still that crisp, you know, solid color, and the backgrounds kind of got that 
you know, filter that photographic effect because I don't like to get crazy. That's the one thing. You don't want to get too crazy with these photographic effects. Just use them in moderation. <laughs> but anyway, so that's pretty much the finished piece. Um, that's how I did it. If you guys have any questions, let me know because I kind of went through a lot of this stuff and it's kind of hard to, to sum up everything. But yeah, that's, that's it. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, if there's anything you want me to go a little more in depth on, please leave a comment in the comment section. Also remember to like, subscribe, all that stuff. And I want you guys to know that I do have this print, this Phoenix Comic Con exclusive. It is. You're not going to find this at any other convention. It's exclusive to Comic Con, but or Phoenix Comic Con. But I will be selling this online at my web store until uh, until they're all gone. Uh, so you know, supplies are limited. But anyway, I've revamped my entire online store. So go check it out. Take a look around. Ha have a look at what I did up there, and maybe you'll find something you like. I don't know. Anyway, you can go to uh, if you can go to circworks.com. There's a shop link. You can click on that. Uh, if you go to Mad Science Supply Company, that'll take you right there too. Or if you click on that little uh, eye up there, uh, there'll be a link to my website. And again, the shop link's up there. So yeah, check it out. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you guys later. That is all.